Let's continue with our new user primer for the events calendar and check out the settings that you have available at your disposal as a site administrator. Now it's important to note that there's a lot of settings here and I'm not going to walk through all of them. That would take a long video and it's not worth either of our time. We do have written instructions that walk through each of these settings in the written portion of the new user primer. In addition, in the lead up to the launch of 3.0, I produced some in-depth videos walking through each of these settings which you can find in the blog loop on the Tribe website. So if you want to check those out, you might as well. Here I'm just going to give you a high level overview and allow you to go explore if you want to check them out more on your own. Starting here on the general tab where these are just of course general settings and you're going to notice that all these settings tabs lead off with a box like this that gives an overview of what the page is going to expect. Here that we're just telling us here's where the calendar lives, here's where available add-ons can be found, and here's an example of the link that gives some link love back to Modern Tribe if you have it enabled. You're not required to but if you want to say that hey yeah Modern Tribe's events calendar is powering this I want to give them a little props for it have this box enabled. You can turn it off if you don't want it and our feelings will certainly not be hurt. General settings are things that didn't really fit into any of these other sections but they're all pretty important. They're things like how many events we want to show per page, whether we want JavaScript controlling the page load, whether we want to allow people to choose between showing the first instance of a recurring event or seeing the entire series, whether we want comments, whether we want our events merged into the main blog loop as opposed to just living on the calendar page. And then there's administrative things like where the calendar lives, whether we have an end of day cutoff so that multi-day events that end in the middle of the night appear or don't appear on grid view for that final day, and a default currency symbol. All of these you are going to want to play around with and all of these we do have greater depth coverage of elsewhere so just keep that in mind. There's also walkthroughs right over here in this little italicized text that tell you a little bit more about what each of these do. The map settings are things that relate exclusively to Google Maps. Obviously, if you don't have Google Maps enabled via this checkbox, they're not going to have any bearing whatsoever. So you want to make sure it's turned on and then you can change things like the distance limit for the map view, what exactly you're using for your map view unit, whether you want it to be miles or kilometers, and then the default zoom level for Google Maps. If somebody doesn't look at a map though, none of these settings related to the maps are going to impact them in any way. Miscellaneous settings, meanwhile, are things that you're probably not going to have to do too much. You're probably only going to have to check out once, if anything, but they're available for you as you see fit. Merge duplicates is going to only arise right when you update from a pre-3.0 version. There may well be duplicate venues and organizers in your system. There's really no way of getting around it after such an update, unfortunately. But this Merge Duplicates button will just take care of eliminating any of those duplicates for you so that you no longer have multiple. It'll merge them all together so you'll have a consistent, accurate number of venues and organizers. And then you have debug mode, which just allows you to turn on debug logging if you want it. Most users, my guess is, won't really rely on this one too much. Moving right along into the Display tab, this is where we control the look and feel with regards to the templates on the front end of the site. The basic template settings lead in with the various style sheets we have available, all the way from the basic, pretty much nothing skeleton styles, all the way up to a fully designed and styled theme which we call the tribe event styles. I can choose the template I want to use for the events. The default events template is wider, the default page template includes a sidebar, and then my theme throws in its own as well. Then I have the enabled event, event views. Now, some of these views are pro-exclusive features. If I was running just the core of the events calendar, all I would see here is list view and month view. However, since I do have pro enabled, I'm seeing all the other options as well. And anything that's checked is appearing as an available option on the front end of the site. Basically, whatever views I have available here are options in the view picker when users are toggling through the calendar on the front end. The default view is just what calendar view the people land on when they come to slash events on your site. Do you want it to be list view, month view, week view, day view, map view, photo view? Whatever is checked in here will appear in here. And then you can disable the event search bar, which is just going to revert us back to the basic search header that we had in pre 3.0 versions. You'll notice when you start playing around with and as we get deeper into this primer that we have a nice events bar on the front end that allows you to manipulate the search quite actively. But some users are not going to want that, in which case they can check this box. Similarly, if you don't want the location search, which is a pro-exclusive feature to be allowed, just check this box and it'll turn it off. Advanced template settings are pretty much a one-trick pony that just allow me to add HTML before or after the content on the events page itself. Moving into the default content tab, this is where we can choose default content that pre-populates organizer, venue, and address information. If I check this box, it will automatically replace empty fields with default values, and then I'll set the default values down below in the dropdowns here. I can either go with no default or I can select an existing organizer venue, etc. that is within my system. Make sure I save my changes at the end because if I don't, none of this is going to take effect. 
Additional fields are another pro-exclusive feature that allow you to add additional metadata to the front-end event sections of your entries. Now, notice what it gives us the examples here. It says things like labels. What we're saying is meal plans. Envision, envision how this is going to look on the front end. We're going to say, in addition to showing the basics like the event category, when it's taking place, the venue, the organizer, we're also going to say meal plans and what meal plans are available. So that because our events relate to this and because this is relevant information to our events, we're using the additional fields to give it increased prominence. You don't have to use these. And we have separate screencasts and separate sections of our primer and of our documentation that walk through how to use these in greater depth. But they are pro-exclusive features. So if you activate just the core ad, the core release, and you expect to see these, don't. You have to have pro in order for this to appear. Licenses we've already covered in a previous screencast, so I'm not going to walk through it here. And help is just an overview of how you can get help. It's a lot of links back to our site, information about other products, etc. But this is just to help you if you find yourself stuck and need better help succeeding. Well, that's where we come in, and that's where this help tab comes in. We've got plenty of resources that should get you where you want to be. That's a high-level overview of the settings tabs. It's not the most enjoyable section of the primer because you don't get to see any of it in action, but don't worry. Come back in part three and we'll walk through the front end.